Hello and welcome to Chinny Vision. This time, it's how to scouter. How to scouter a 1989 game by the assembly line, published by Audiogenic. Starting off on the PC version, we're going to skip around between all the versions today rather than do them one after the other. This is running on my Amstrad PC 2086 with NEC V30 processor. So you start off with a beeper tune because there's no sound card in this PC. And I think we're running an EGA graphics mode. So a nice title screen there. So we press button to start. And off we go. And we have a bouncing ball. And as you can see, we bounce around quite a lot. And it, there's not many frames of animation. And you have to bounce on the enemies in order. If you hit them when the arrow isn't above them, they split into two. And there's a very strict time limit on each level. Over to the ST. So different title screen here. You can enter in a level code to start at certain points in the game, although the menus don't tell you that. You know, you know that from the instructions. So again, here we go. Much better animation on the ST. The ball is much more controllable. The balancing mechanism is a little bit complicated because you have to press fire when you're in the air to make the ball bounce either higher or lower. Various power-ups appear, and the time limits on each level are very, very tight. On to the Amiga. And you've got sampled music on the title screen there in the menu, and far nicer graphics than the ST. Although all the graphics appear to be scrunched up into a 320 by 200 window. And the start screen is a different layout to the other versions, not just the ST and PC, but also the 8-bit versions, which we'll see in a bit. The starting screen is quite, quite different. But none of the other screens seem to be. Over to the BBC Micro. Yes, this game was one of the final commercial releases, I guess, for the BBC Micro. And there's an Electron version as well. No music, but we do get these all these garish patterns on the menu screen. And off we go. So it's a much more compressed screen here on the BBC and much, much slower. Changes the game, the speed the ball goes at. And over to a CRT view here to see what this looks like on a monitor, an Acorn monitor. And the garish colours seem a little bit better, but it doesn't improve the speed the game plays at. Over to the C64. And thank goodness we've got sprites on the C64 because the entire experience is far, far smoother. Although the graphics are incredibly garish, these backgrounds. What were they thinking? Time limits on each level are incredibly tight. And you get more points the quicker you complete each level and the less enemies you spit. Over to the CPC and a lovely loading screen here on the CPC. Makes good use of the machine's colours. And we get music on the menu screen. And we actually get an option to enter the password. And th there is a level designer, which we'll look at later. That's why it says load screens down the bottom. We start level one. And the graphics are, yep, very garish. Spectrum poor graphics. And the animation is absolutely abysmal to the point where the game is virtually unplayable. This, it just needs more frames of animation. It makes it so hard to control the game. So that's level one completed on the CPC. Over the Spectrum, which should be the same as the CPC, but hopefully a little bit faster. This game was released in 89 on, on the 16 bits and 1990 on the 8-bits. And a CRT view here on the Spectrum as well. And yeah, it looks it's the same as... It's a monochromatic CPC version. We're just about... With, and it's slightly faster, and the animation it me means it is just about playable, whereas the CPC version doesn't really seem to be. On to level two. Okay, we're over to the PC. You see how fast that ball bounces, and just the lack of animation, it just makes it very really difficult to control on the PC. On the Amiga here, you can see it's so much smoother. The ball's moving at the same speed, but it's just much more controllable. There are different enemies here on the Amiga as well, and I'm sure there is an enhanced version of How to Scouter, but I'm not sure that's the Amiga version, is the enhanced version. Back on the ST, which looks far more like the 8-bits, but it still has nice animation. 
I say nice animation, it's just the smoothness. And we look at the CPC level two here, and you can see it's just so difficult. There's so few frames that it's incredibly difficult to judge and play the game. C64 has no such problems. It's still a horrible mechanic, the way the ball bounces. Having to press fire when you're in the air to make it bounce higher. It's I've been playing this game quite a bit. And I'm no good with games that have bouncing balls anyway. But oh, this is a horrible screen to look at on the 64. With a bounce up there. Now you can't avoid splitting baddies on this level. And on the BBC, well, it's a little bit more visible, but it's still horribly garish and slow. This, this is a game that really needs fluidity. So on the systems where it doesn't have speed and smoothness, the game becomes much, much harder. The, you can see on the 8 bits, the screens are more compressed down, but actually that's not a huge issue. It's not, not the kind of issue you'd think it might be. The issues are to do with the speed the game runs at. No in-game music on any of the systems. It's all sound effects. So, lots of samples on the Amiga version and a few samples on the ST and on the PC where it's just the beeper noises, on my version at least. Back to the Amiga, and this is still level two. And it's, It just becomes far easier to do well. It's still fiddly. Where there isn't a border on the screen, you can walk around to the other side of the screen. Come on, I've got to do this. Six seconds left. Five seconds. One there. One there. Come on. Come on. Got him. And this is a much better background here on the Spectrum with bricks. Very clear. Just a shame, it, again, it's just a little bit too jerky in the movements, but it is more playable than the CPC version on the Spectrum. Oh, God. not long to go now. Get up to the top. Done it. And it, a lot of the, the... The problem is the time limits on all the screens are incredibly difficult. The game is fiddly enough as it is, let alone putting incredibly tight time limits on each level it stops the game it's trying to be a puzzle game it's trying to be an arcade game the problem is it falls between the two stalls because you can't sit there and work the puzzles out because the clock is constantly running down and i find that clock really sucks any enjoyment out of the game along with the uh, the controls and the lack of fluidity on some of the systems on the st and you can hear when the X appeared, sampled speech said X. Physics are something I mention in a lot of the games, and the ball physics on this game are a little bit peculiar. They, the, the game seems to follow its own physics rules, which is fine. I just wish it was a little bit more controllable. Other games from the assembly line included Pipe Mania um, and Emotion, two other puzzle games. Uh, Pipe Mania, of course, has you running against a clock as well. Um, but those games are more fun. A lot of thought has gone into this game. But, and this is one of the levels that doesn't have on C64 any border. So when you hit the edge, you just walk around to the other side. There's a lot of polish and thought here, but you just wonder if the programmer's got a bit too good at playing the game. Over to the CPC, where things are still looking garish and jerky. There's no reason why the animation should be so bad on the CPC. It just hasn't been optimised properly. It's probably running pretty much unaltered spectrum code. And you just look, when you scroll between either sides of the screen on this, because the ball's moving so fast... You can see just how few frames of animation there are. The graphics are detailed enough, but the colour choices are poor, and the animation is abysmal. Over here on the Specky, again, nice sensible coloured background there, grey colour scheme, but it's all very clear. And on the C64, when you haven't got those garish schemes in the background, it looks far, far better. On the 
puzzles themselves here, as seen here on the ST are quite nice. Simple to solve, but they require skill and puzzle solving ability. And this is another peculiar one because you have to use this warping through motion and you've got these stairs and they're really tight time limit. Oh, but then you can get a power up there that extends the time and you, you manage to obliterate all the baddies. Hey. There is a level designer with the game, and I'm showing it on the Amiga here. So you can draw platforms, you can place baddies, you can save and load screens, and there is a two-player option in Helter Scouter as well. So you can play the levels with two-player, and you can design two-player screens as well. This is the screen designer on the BBC Micro. I think all the versions have the screen designer, so it does add a lot of longevity to the game because you can design your own screens. So what have we learned about how to Scouter? Well, it's an innovative and interesting puzzle slash arcade game that's been ported to lots and lots of systems. On the 16 bits, the PC, the Amiga and the ST, they're all fairly polished. The PC version perhaps needs a few more frames of animation. It just seems to be a little bit uncontrollable. But on the ST and Amiga, you can feel what they're trying to do, but the game is just a little bit too fiddly and almost as if the programmers got really good at playing the game and then have made the time limits a little bit too hard. On the 8-bits, the closest to the 16-bit version is the C64 because it's using the sprites to at least give you a smooth motion when controlling the ball. Also, the screen seems to be slightly less crushed down. The Spectrum and Amstrad, well, yeah, the CPC version certainly is far, far too slow. Just doesn't have enough frames of animation to make controlling that ball remotely feasible in a way that is enjoyable. On the Spectrum, there's just enough speed to make it a little bit more enjoyable, but it's still a flawed game. At least it doesn't have the garish graphics the CPC version does. On the BBC, it's a brave attempt to port the game to the aging BBC Micro. You do have to wonder why they bother, because it's too slow, and you've still got those frustrating time limits. I guess on all the versions, what I'd say is if they just either loosened up those time limits or just taken it off altogether, How to Scouter would be a far more enjoyable game. It's just really frustrating because you're constantly battling the clock and the controls. And even on the systems where you've got smooth control and bouncing of the ball, it's still frustrating. It's not a terribly good control system. It seems to me it's a game that's trying to do far too much and yet doesn't do any of it particularly well. Overall, Helter Skelter was a nice attempt at a cross between an arcade and a puzzle game, but it's a frustrating experience no matter what system you choose to play it on.